thanks to Watchshop for sponsoring this video. Watchshop are having a big Black Friday sale where they're giving you up to 70% off designer and luxury watches such as Citizen, Seiko, Maurice Lacroix, Tissot, Casio, Rotary and so many more. I picked out this attractive Citizen Eco Drive which features full titanium construction and a solar movement for a great price. With code BF25 you can get an extra 25% off watches like this and there's free UK next day delivery on orders over £60 if you order before 4pm. Link in the description. So there's a certain Q Timex that nobody seems to be talking about. That being the elusive Falcon Eye, which I think is quite possibly the best looking out of all of these retro reissue watches. It's sized quite well, has a slick sporty aesthetic and one of the coolest dials that I've seen to date. So cool in fact that I decided to pick one up for myself. However, I'm wondering, is the beauty just skin deep? That was one of the recurring themes with the other Q-Timex watches. Many people liked the way they looked, but some weren't willing to cough up the extra cash for what was essentially a basic quartz watch. In this video, I'm going to give you the lowdown on this one to see if the conclusions are the same. The Falcon Eye is a faithful recreation of the original watch of the same name from the 1970s, but with modern materials. I purchased this with my own money on Halloween for just over £100 on discount. Normally, it's closer to about £160. I'll link it down below. The watch arrived in a regular Timex box, which I felt was a tiny bit of a missed opportunity. I half expected this to come in some sort of retro box, akin to the art style used in the marketing materials for this wristwatch. Nevertheless, the packaging is arguably the least important thing. As often, the more that's spent on the packaging, the less gets spent on the actual watch. Let's get into it then. Upon first inspection, the watch appeared a bit larger than I'd anticipated. Indeed, the watch does have the 38mm diameter and 30mm depth as advertised. However, the 44mm lug-to-lug -lug size is somewhat deceptive. The concealed lug design gives the piece notably more wrist presence. I'd say on wrist it wears more like a 39 or 40mm watch, and unfortunately, those concealed lugs make the watch sit a little awkwardly on my skinny 6.25 inch wrist. That combined with the bracelet, which I'll touch on in a moment, has unfortunately made this a no-go for my wrist, which I didn't expect when I saw that modest sizing online. Thankfully, unlike the cheaper brass Timex offerings, this one is fully stainless steel, which is the standard material used in most wristwatches. For the most part, this one has a polished finish, aside from the sections above the lugs, which are showcased in a vertically brushed one. Even though it doesn't fit me, I do like the shape of the case, which has a sporty, angular look profile when viewed at 90 degrees. While it feels fairly substantial for a quartz watch, there is one part that bugs me. If you look closely at the beveled edges, as the case drops off towards the lugs, there's a ridge at each corner. It's at the point where the case rides up the bezel slightly. This leaves an unusual edge in the polishing, which looks a bit sloppy as it isn't precise as some of the other sharper edges on the watch. You'll also find a similar section at each corner of the original vintage Falcon Eye, but at a glance it almost looks like a, a fault with the way that the case has been moulded even though it isn't. I'd rather this either be neater and sharper like the stock images portray or completely smoothed out. Because this sits somewhere between it just looks unrefined for me. The rear of the case is pretty cool, featuring a brushed finish with a quick change battery hatch to boot. Quick change battery hatch to boot my gosh. While it does protrude slightly, you can't feel it when on wrist and it'll allow you to switch out the cell when it finally expires. The screw on case back ensures you get a fairly reasonable 5 ATM of water resistance, which is decent for this style of watch. This means that you could try and take it swimming, just don't expect anything spectacular. Before we talk about the best part of the watch, we've got to talk about arguably the worst part of it. The bracelet. It's terrible. It looks pretty cool, fitting the aesthetic rather nicely, but is constructed of cheap feeling folded links and feels like it's been taken straight from a £15 Casio. I could be wrong, but from what I can gather, these links can't be easily removed either. So despite the adjustable slide clamp mechanism, it doesn't go small enough for my six and a quarter inch wrist. The side with the hook on is just a fraction too long. You probably could replace this for an alternative 18 millimeter option or employ some sort of hack to break off the links if needs be. However, it's still disappointing for a watch at this price point. I anticipate the stock band could also be a hair ripper, so if you have furry arms, be warned. I was hoping that this could be a cool, sporty watch that would actually fit my small wrist for once. However, that doesn't seem to be the case without some major modifications. Some of you may be equally frustrated by the Crystal Choice 2. 
This is a piece of heavily domed acrylic, which will likely scratch up very quickly if you're wearing the watch regularly. It does suit the retro aesthetic and gives good visibility angles, though my preference certainly lies with more scratch resistant crystals. Without a doubt though, the star of the show is what lies beneath that acrylic. This has to be the single funkiest dial that I've ever seen on a wristwatch. Some watches look much better in pictures and videos than in real life, however I can confirm that this blue wave pattern is just as bright and bold in person. And it looks just like the original watch from the 70s. From what I can gather, the shape of these waves is unique from piece to piece, as mine is arranged slightly differently to that featured on the stock images. Regardless, they still glow beautifully in the light as you rotate the watch, almost looking like those waves are moving horizontally across the dial. How exactly this effect is achieved, I'm not sure, but if you're anything like me, this has some sort of boyish charm and invokes memories of the holographic Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards from my youth. I particularly enjoy the way it falls off steeply at the circumference, with the small loom pips protruding outwards slightly, which accentuate that curvature even further. The bright blue colour does a great job of enhancing that retro vibe, especially when combined with the multitude of gold accents on the rest of the watch. Indeed, several other areas do their best to try and grab your attention. Not only do you have the gold bezel and crown, but the logo, hands, date window and indices also feature a similarly toned finish. Overall, this results in a very extravagant, flashy look that you're either going to love or think looks tacky. Upon opening the box for the first time, I was really impressed with it, as well as the attention to detail of the design. I love the cursive font type they've utilised for these Qtimex watches. I think the conjoined lettering perfectly fits the retro theme that they're shooting for with this model. Despite this being an affordable watch, they've also taken the time to add a gold surround to the date window, which looks great. Though due to the movement selection, it's positioned slightly more centrally than I'd like. The standard white wheel is a great choice though, as it blends in with the white sections already present on the hour markers. The hands also look great with a stretch of luminescence down the center of each, aside from the standard white second hand. In low light, you do get some visibility, but this Qtimex model doesn't have the indiglo function found in many other low-end Timex watches. Perhaps with this unusual dial, that wasn't possible. And yes, despite the construction, there are still a few things that reveal that this watch was built on a budget. First up is the quality control. When you look closely, you'll notice that alignment is a slight issue. On this unit, the faceted 10 o'clock marker has a groove that isn't quite central, leaving one side marginally slimmer than the other. It's a similar story on the hour hand, where the loom section isn't perfectly aligned with the rest of the white paint. Nevertheless, these minor inconsistencies are often going to be there on budget watches. And it's not my main gripe with this piece. My main gripe is the movement. Timex has chosen to go with a quartz movement, as the Q Timex branding indicates. To be clear, I don't have anything against quartz movements in principle. In fact, the watches I wear most regularly are often battery powered, as they tend to be thinner and are much more accurate than anything mechanical. Nevertheless, they've choked with the one in the Falcon Eye. Not only is it relatively loud, luckily not quite on the same level as their Weekender, but it's also poorly aligned and quite inconsistent. As you've likely noticed by now from the B-roll shots of this watch, the second hand keeps hitting between the markers at varying distances as it moves its way around the minute track. Sometimes it's close to the marker, while other times it's a mile away. While this issue is forgivable on cheap watches, such as that Timex Weekender let's say, the more you start to spend, the more frustrating it becomes to see it repeatedly miss. For quartz watches at over £150, I'd like to see more brands, including Timex, put more resources into ensuring better alignment. I won't be surprised if that's more difficult than I'm making it sound, but I hate the back and forth of returning and then repurchasing watches just to try and track down a unit that's aligned properly. I mean, what's the point in having markers if they're not being hit, you know? And I'd honestly sacrifice some accuracy of these quartz movements to get better alignment. Apparently, the original version of this watch had a quartz movement that operated at 3 beats per second. So it would have been nice to see this recreated here too. It may have also helped to conceal some of those alignment issues. Perhaps that's just my OCD kicking in though, let me know in the comments. But yeah, with this unit, if the watch was more viable for my wrist size, I'd have to get this replaced to try and find one that hit the markers. But how does this stack up against some of the other Qtimex lineup then? Well, I can give you some general observations if you're considering multiple options. If you're looking for a blue dial watch, I personally prefer this one over the other sporty Qtimex range for one simple reason. If you look closely at that other model, you'll see that the blue indigo colored dial 
doesn't match the tone of the blue on the bezel. Once you've noticed it, you just can't stop seeing it. And it seems like a bit of an obvious oversight on their part. Obviously, this Falcon Eye doesn't have that issue. If you've got small wrists like me though, chances are that that other Q-Timex will probably fit you better as the lugs taper off at what appears to be a steeper angle, meaning you shouldn't get the large gap between the lugs and bracelet as I did with the Falcon Eye. Something else to note is that an error on the Timex website has the original Q-Timex listed as having less water resistance than this model. In reality, both watches have the same 5 bar water rating, so don't let that sway your decision unnecessarily. Outside of that, they've got the same movement, the same materials, and very similar sizing. Overall, I probably like the execution of this piece more than the former, as I think it's got more personality and originality to it, and if it fit me, I'd probably keep it and wear it occasionally. And also make sure you try and track down some type of discount code before pulling the trigger, as £159 is still a fair chunk of change for a quartz watch with some of the rough edges I mentioned previously. Despite that, I'm looking forward to seeing what creative designs Timex can come out with next, to see if there are any others that'll actually fit me this time. If it fits your needs, you can check this watch out in the description. And while you're down there, check out the watch shop Black Friday sale to see if you can grab any of the bargains. Subscribe for more. See you on the next one.